um, is the most rough. So it can be hard um, to find additional fossils as a result of that. But as we go out and explore more and more, places like China, for instance, are opening up to new discoveries, we are starting to see that many of the classic large-scale transitional events in the history of life are being filled in. China, for instance, is giving us a great picture of the dinosaur bird evolution <coughs> lineage and their offshoots. And this is just a few examples, of course, of some of the more um, the, the infillings of those gaps. But even such is such the case, transitional features, things that we're looking for, can often be very difficult to preserve. For instance, the feathers of Deinonychus. Okay, we find the skeleton of Deinonychus all the time, but there are now close relatives of Deinonychus, like Sinornithosaurus, that <coughs> are in the same family that are showing primitive feather-like structures. Feathers, of course, are one of the things that are very difficult to preserve in the fossil record. And so that very important transitional feature would be something that would be normally missed because of the vagaries of preservation. Oh, something went a little funny there on the, on the screen. It's important to note that theory of evolution does not require or predict a complete fossil record. It doesn't need it. Okay? Most creationists think that the lack of transitions in the fossil record indicate a fundamental biological gap, fundamental biological difference. But indeed, most evolutionary biologists, or all of them, would say, no, we would expect that, actually, right? We would expect those gaps because of chance events of preservation, because of the nature of the geologic record, because of immigration of organisms, and the nature of speciation. And indeed, transitional, the definition of a transitional fossil is not limited to scales of evolution. You can have traditional forms at every scale, at every time um, scale as well. So it applies both to evolution within a species at the micro level, the low species level, as well as what we classically think of transitional forms being the macro level. Now when we think of transitional uh, forms, we tend to think of big picture stuff. Reptiles to mammals, dinosaurs to birds, fish to tetrapods, these kinds of very large features. But indeed, of course, macroevolution also includes speciation events. And transitional fossils apply to all of these. So microevolutionary transitions, where we start looking at changes in morphology within species up to and including speciation events, indeed have forms that are mosaics between their ancestral and their descendant features, or um, relatives. Those features are what defines a transitional fossil. So when you look at it in terms of the definition of a transitional fossil, the fossil record is absolutely completely full of transitional features. So rather than limiting it to our classic, very large-scale definitions of what we would consider to be a transitional form like Archaeopteryx, for instance, or even horse evolution, we can look at evolution within single lineages and see that all of those fossils, if they have an ancestor and a descendant, is actually a transitional form, which means the entire fossil record is completely full of transitional fossils. Except maybe in some evolutionary dead ends where, like, say, for instance, T. rex or something didn't leave descendants, but they still have ancestral features. So if you look at it that way, there really is no case to be made that the fossil record has no transitional forms, because the entire fossil record is a history of transition through time. And in that sense, it is just absolutely chock full. When I study trilobite evolution, every step along the way through time, I am picking up transitional forms. Well, Darwin had um, his gradualistic ideas about how evolution proceeds. And when studies were done shortly after on the origin of species, for many, many years, gradualism was the bandwagon that you're going to be on. 
paleontologists and scientists would go out and they would try to find examples of gradualistic evolution. And oftentimes they would kind of come up a little short. They'd find long periods of stasis or no change, punctuated by sudden appearances of new species in the fossil record. And they would say, oh, well, this must be the result of imperfections in the geologic record, rather than actually reflecting what well, might actually be how species originate. And we can look to the modern to understand this process. That's exactly what Gould and Eldridge did <coughs> with looking at the number of eye files in the fake off trilobites. I love how trilobites are some of the best examples of the two different sort of classic uh, methods of evolution or modes of speciation, I should say. But they thought, you know, maybe these long periods of stasis and these jumps in morphology aren't a, a, a fact of imperfections. We don't have to actually say that there's stuff wrong here. Maybe this is actually a reflection of speciation, of the process of speciation. So here we have our, law, our uh, very rapid, quick transition between species, followed by periods of long stasis of almost no net change. I would argue, of course, that there is a lot of change going on in here, but the end result is no net change that defines our punctuated equilibrium model. <clears throat> Darwin actually hit on this before Punky ever came out. He understood the ideas about geographic distribution of modern organisms and how that might relate to the lack of transitional fossils, particularly at the species level. And he said, the type of discovery in any formation in any country in all the early stages of transition between any two forms is small, and the successive changes are supposed to have been local or confined to one spot. And this would again greatly lessen the chance of our being able to trace the stages of transition in any one geologic formation. He was pointing out that speciation happens pretty rapidly, and it's a confined event, geographically. And given the fact that it's difficult to preserve fossils, to preserve organisms as fossils, the chances of actually capturing that exact event in a very confined space over such a short period of time, geologically speaking, was so small that you would expect there to be a gap. That you would expect to see a pattern of sudden appearance of new species in the record. And indeed, that's what you do see, of course. Now, microfossils provide some of the best examples of both gradualistic and punctuated evolution that we have in the record. And here's an example of a radial layer to show you that we have these morphological stasis periods. Once again, there's a lot of change going on in there, but not a lot of net change, followed by these very quick, rapid sort of speciation events. So Darwin was already mentioning or discussing the idea of allopatric and or peripatric speciation, where you see a large population of organisms with a small subset of that separated from that group, or by uh, a geographic barrier, for instance, okay, essentially giving us a founding or founder effect population where that small population would expect to experience rapid morphological change due to their low um, or small gene pool, and that would be confined to a very small area, where the large parent population would tend to be fairly stable because of its very large population size. <coughs> Once they were morphologically diverged or genetically diverged enough, it might be expected that that small founding population would then be able to rapidly expand possibly due to having a benefit or being able to exploit some ecological niche of some sort. So with this type of speciation, reflecting actually how organisms speciate, we see small populations very restricted geographically changing very rapidly through time and then spreading out and occupying much larger territories. So if you were not able to capture that small, um, confined, temporally restricted transition, 
like what we have in this example, what you would expect to see is little to no change and abrupt appearance of species in the fossil record with pretty much no transitions between them. So the lack of transitional fossils uh, in this case is a function of the actual nature of speciation itself. 